freezing experiments. If you've ever had the misfortune of getting locked outside during a deadly winter storm without a coat, hand warmers, or a heated blanket, then you might have a slight idea of how bad the Nazi freezing experiments were. In the Nazi camp, you'll be locked outside in a snowstorm, and as you're shivering like a chihuahua with your teeth chattering, some guy with a clipboard would just come out, take a few notes, and then leave you there to keep practicing your human popsicle routine until you eventually freeze solid. Apparently, someone high up in the Nazi command chain thought it was a brilliant idea to find out exactly how long their pilots could survive after crashing into the freezing waters of the North Sea. To conduct this frosty experiment, they would grab prisoners from concentration camps and either dunk them into tanks of ice-cold water or just leave them out in the freezing cold like they were waiting for a bus that was never going to arrive. It actually gets worse, because not only did they want to freeze these poor souls solid, but they also wanted to figure out how to unfreeze them. After spending hours and below zero temperatures, they'd try thawing out the human popsicles by pouring hot water directly on their frozen skin, dunking them in scalding hot water, or just plopping them down beside a fire like they were logs that needed defrosting. Surprise, surprise, most of the victims ended up six feet deep. The experiments basically confirmed that anyone with even a single functioning brain cell could have told you, leaving people naked in the cold is a terrible idea, and pouring hot water on them to unfreeze them is an even worse one. Twin experiments. If you were an identical twin in 1941 and your village was unfortunately invaded by the Nazis, you would be captured and shipped off to Auschwitz, a concentration camp where you'd meet Dr. Joseph Mengele, also known as the Angel of Death. This guy had a creepy, obsessive fascination for identical twins and believed that twins held the key to unlocking the secrets of genetics, like a human cheat code, and he was desperate to crack it. This basically meant he would carry out very inhumane experiments on the twins, like injecting dye into your eyes to see if he could change the color. He would perform freaky surgeries or try to sew the both of you together in order to create his own sick version of the conjoined twins. And if one of you dies during the experiment, he'd immediately kill the other twin so that he can also compare the dead bodies. This was sadly the fate of every twin that came in contact with the mad Dr. Mengele. High altitude experiments. So basically, the Nazi had millions of Jewish, Russian, and Romani prisoners at their disposal since they considered them less human. They were basically used as lab rats to do whatever crossed their twisted minds. And well, the Nazis were very popular for their sadistic experimental fantasies. It was like a horrific science fair where the prize for creativity was human suffering. One such experiment was the high altitude test, where they decided to see what happens to the human body at extreme altitudes. The idea was to help their pilots survive at those heights and maybe improve their military technology. But apparently, the best way to test pilot endurance is to treat people like pressure cooker dumplings. So if you were a prisoner then, they would shove you into a makeshift high altitude chamber and start to crank up the pressure to suck out all the oxygen slowly. They were basically attempting to simulate what it feels like to be way up in the thin air of a mountain or a plane at cruising altitude. Except in reality, it was more like trying to breathe while someone is gently suffocating you with a pillow, only less gentle and more fatal. As the pressure cooker dropped and the air thinned, your lungs would expand painfully, trying desperately to find something, anything, to breathe. It's safe to say this was not a relaxing mountain retreat. Many suffered seizures, lost consciousness, or died from the sheer lack of oxygen. Those who somehow survived often had severe brain damage, which, if you think about it, was probably the body's way of saying, I'd like to forget this ever happened. Malaria Experiments If you've spent any significant amount of time in Africa, there's a good chance you've had an up-close and personal encounter with a malaria-infected mosquito. You probably remember the intense fever that felt like you were roasting from the inside out, and the splitting headache that made you want to trade your head for a less painful one. Now imagine if someone purposefully infected you with a malaria parasite when there were no drugs for treatment. Sadly, this was exactly what millions of people went through in the hands of a Nazi doctor named Klaus Schilling, who was willing to do all it takes to find the cure for malaria, but unfortunately there was nothing noble about his quest. This guy would literally round up prisoners and lock them up in a room where malaria-infected mosquitoes were waiting. Sometimes he would just directly shoot up the malaria parasite into your bloodstream. Once infected, you would go through the whole malaria experience, first the fever, then the uncontrollable shivering, followed by the fever spikes that had them sweating 
buckets as if they were trapped in a sauna from hell. And all the while, the doctors were sitting back, cool as cucumbers, watching the disease do its thing. No rush to make anyone feel better, of course. After all, they were there to jot down notes, not to actually help. Now, when you're almost about to die, that's when the doctors would finally decide to step in and administer some treatments. But as you might guess, the treatment often didn't work, leaving the victims to suffer even more before inevitably succumbing to the disease. After all, nothing says cutting-edge science like giving people a life-threatening illness on purpose and then watching them die slowly. Artificial insemination. Now, let's say you're a woman in a Nazi concentration camp, and one day a doctor approaches you with a look that's way too excited for your liking. It's experiment day, and you're chosen to be a part of the twisted breeding program whether you like it or not. Basically, the whole idea was to artificially plant the sperm of a freaking monkey or any animal of choice into a woman's body in order to produce the perfect race. The errant rubbish. Sometimes the mad doctors would even push up various chemicals to speed up the whole sick process. It's like they were trying to play God, but with absolutely no understanding of humanity or ethics. Kind of like if Dr. Frankenstein had no morals and a really, really bad idea. Well, surprise, surprise, that didn't work, and the women were just left with severe physical and psychological trauma. Seawater experiments. As a child, you were probably taught that drinking seawater is a one-way ticket to organ failure and death thanks to the ridiculous amount of salt in it. But apparently, the not Nazis must have either missed that class or decided to do things the Nazi way, by bombing the schools that were supposed to teach them this basic survival tip. Because during World War II, Nazi scientists, in their never-ending quest to redefine inhumane, decided to test the limits of human endurance by forcing prisoners to drink only seawater. The twisted logic behind this was that they wanted to see how long people could survive on a diet of pure ocean brine. They thought this might help them figure out ways to save stranded sailors or soldiers. So, in what must have been the world's worst hydration experiment, they subjected prisoners to days on end of drinking nothing but seawater. As you might expect, things went downhill fast. The prisoners' kidneys were put into overdrive, trying to flush out all of that excess salt, which only made them even more dehydrated. It's like trying to quench your thirst by chugging sand. It just doesn't work. If you're one of the unfortunate test subjects, you will suffer confusion, delirium, and eventually organ organ failure. It wasn't just dehydration, it was like the prisoners' bodies were slowly pickling from the inside out. Bone, muscle, and nerve transplantation experiments. Women really went through a lot during the Nazi era because for some reason they were always first in line for all of the horrible experiments. If you were one of the unfortunate healthy female prisoners at the Ravensbrück concentration camp during World War II, you could find yourself dragged into a special room where doctors, use the term loosely here, would restrain you to a bed and start slicing off chunks of your bone, muscle, and nerve tissue. And then, as if that wasn't horrifying enough, they tried to attach those those pieces to another female prisoner like some demented game of surgical mix and match. In typical Nazi fashion, there was no anesthesia because why make something less painful when you can maximize the agony? So these women were forced to endure the unimaginable, watching in sheer horror as parts of their bodies were chopped off, all while experiencing excruciating pain that no human should ever have to suffer. As you might imagine, the women were left with open wounds that festered and rotted. And as for the reason behind these bizarre body-chopping experiments, well, the Nazi doctors were basically trying to figure out if they could remove parts of one person's body and successfully graft them onto another. Of course, the experiment didn't work. It just led to even more deaths, and those who survived were left permanently mutilated and traumatized. Phosphorus Burns Experiment Imagine you're a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp during World War II. Life is already beyond terrible, with the constant hunger, fear, and brutal conditions as your daily reality. Now, one day, you're dragged from your dirty prison cell into a cold, sterile room. Without a word, a doctor rubs a white substance on your arm. At first, it feels harmless, but then it ignites and fire literally erupts across your skin, which makes you scream in gut-wrenching agony. After what seems like an eternity of being burned alive, the flames finally die out, leaving your arms a charred, raw mess of pain and bloody flesh. Meanwhile, the doctors just stand up and start to scrape and poke at the fresh burns, intensifying your pain, all in the name of science. Now, the weird substance they applied on your hand is phosphorus, which was a key ingredient 
radiant and incendiary bombs used during the war. These bombs were designed to create massive fires, and the burns they caused were some of the most horrific injuries imaginable. So naturally, the Nazis wanted to study these injuries up close, but they need to create them intentionally, and who best to use for their sick trial and error if not humans they didn't like? After burning a prisoner with phosphorus, they'd try various treatments to see what worked best, but then the patient would usually die from the burns themselves or from the infections that followed. Those who survived were left with severe disfigurements and lifelong pain. This shows that the experiments were less about advancing medical knowledge and more about satisfying a twisted curiosity, like a kid burning ants with a magnifying glass only on a much, much larger scale. Find out more about the horrifying experiences of the Nazis by joining our Discord server today. Sulfanilamide Experiment So, three decades before Hitler declared war on the world, an Austrian chemist known as Paul Josef Jacob discovered sulfanilamide, an antibacterial drug. But what does this have to do with the Nazi experiments? Well, when the war finally came, one of Hitler's closest pals, Reinhard Heydrich, was severely injured in a car bombing in 1942, and even though Hitler tried everything to save him, the man developed sepsis, an infection that ultimately killed him, much to Hitler's fury. Hitler blamed his personal physician, Karl Gebhardt, for refusing to treat Heydrich with sulfanilamide. But according to the doctor, that wouldn't have helped at all, and to prove this to Hitler, they rounded up the healthiest women they could find, cut their legs or arms open, or shot them in the leg, and started rubbing dirt, pieces of wood, and broken glass into the wound, making sure it was good and filthy before sewing it shut. They were basically trying to recreate the injuries Heydrich suffered. Once the wounds were thoroughly contaminated and infection had set in, the doctors finally got around to administering the sulfanilamide. But this wasn't about careful, measured treatment. They just started pumping the women full of the drug, hoping to see if it could magically cure the infection they deliberately caused. Meanwhile, the women were left in agonizing pain, watching as their wounds festered, their limbs swelled, and the infection spread. The doctors observed, not with any concern for their suffering, but with cold detachment, taking notes on the results of their barbaric experiment. Sterilization experiments. The Nazis' twisted obsession with creating a so-called perfect society led them down some of the darkest paths imaginable, including conducting a horrific sterilization experiments on thousands of men and women. Their goal? To fix the people they deemed undesirable, which, in their twisted view, meant making sure these individuals could never have children. And of course, they weren't interested in doing this in any way that could be considered humane. So if you were among the prisoners, they would inject you with mysterious chemicals designed to mess with your reproductive systems, effectively shutting down your ability to have kids. But rather than simply stopping reproduction, these chemicals burned like fire as they entered your body, causing unimaginable pain and excruciating agony. If the injections weren't enough to satisfy the Nazi doctor's cruel intentions, you would be wheeled into surgery as you lay there, fully conscious, then they'd start brutally mutilating your private parts. Now, if they couldn't cut them off entirely, they'd damage them beyond use, making sure that any hope of a future family was permanently destroyed. Sometimes they would blast your reproductive organs with high doses of radiation, leaving you with severe burns, internal damage, and a body that had been irreversibly ravaged by by these brutal procedures. Head Injury Experiments Let's say you're a prisoner at the Dachau concentration camp, and as if the daily horrors of life weren't enough, the camp's so-called doctors decide they needed to find out what happens when you take a really, really hard hit to the head. Their bright idea? Study brain injuries to figure out how to help soldiers who might suffer from them in combat. Sounds almost noble, until you realize they're about to turn you into a human crash test dummy. They'd strap you down nice and tight so you can't move an inch, then without so much as a warning or an ounce of anesthesia, they'd whack your head with a large stick or blunt object. The impact would fracture your skull and cause your brain to start bleeding, which would most likely cause brain damage and a stroke. But hey, they've got an endless supply of prisoners, so after taking their notes and jotting down how your body reacts to the abuse, they'd toss your paralyzed body aside like yesterday's garbage and move on to the next unfortunate soul. For the next round of victims, they'd mix it up a bit, maybe drop heavy weights on their heads, or use a rigged-up device to deliver a controlled yet devastating blow. It's like they were running some twisted version of a game show, except instead of a shiny new car, the only problem
surprise was a severe concussion or worse. Electroshock therapy experiments. So it's the peak of the Second World War and fortunately the Nazi army just bombed and invaded your town and you were taken in as a prisoner of war. Now you're sitting in a cold, dimly lit room in a Nazi camp and suddenly a group of Nazi doctors walk in, wheeling a cart with wires, electrodes, and what looks like an old car battery. Suddenly you're dragged into the metal chair and electrodes are connected to your head, arms, and feet. The scientists then crank up the voltage until you literally start to cook from the inside out. The heat from the electrodes was so high that the spots connected to your body would literally start smoking. It's like a microwave dinner gone horribly, horribly wrong, except this time you're the dinner. The reason for the diabolical act was because the Nazis decided to use electroshock therapy as a method of mind control to erase memories and cure depression. Well, that didn't work, and the only thing it achieved was more pain, confusion, permanent brain damage, and death in most cases. Thank <laughs> you.